In the prior video help, we were looking at the account ledger summary screen, and I pointed out that we needed to use the purchase ledger, sales ledger, and expense ledger to provide the income, purchase cost, sum of expenses, and the sum of the total of taxes. Uh, let's go walking through the screens first, and I'll show you that in the sales area, you'll see that there is a field for uh, sales taxes, and the sales tax is summed straight down to the bottom of the screen. So the sum of taxes is here. And what will happen is when you're looking for the summary of the current month to put into the sales income, that would be the amount of what you received or was paid by the, uh, the persons that were selling items to. So the summary total here would be the number that you would use in that screen. Uh, the way you get to that is you would do a find based on the, the invoice dates. And you could do a date or a date range as what we've explained in the past. You would start the do find and put in the month. In the case of this, it would be three starting with one. Uh, it would be three uh, greater than or equal to three slash one slash 214. Less than or equal to the end of the month, which would be March 30th. So it would be 330. Uh, 2014. That would give you all of the invoices for that particular month showing you the su summary total. Now you can use this in other ways if you wanted to look at a summary for any period, a week or whatever, but the number you're looking for for the monthly summary totals for the ledger account, the account ledger, would be that number right there. Now if you had a balance of amount, you would see a difference between the invoice totals and the sum paid. And you really want to look at the sum paid because that's actual cash, cash that you're receiving. And in the same case, we're going to see this with uh, expenses, where you would have one number where there's the actual amount ordered, but there is the amount that you actually paid. Let's take a look at that. So let's go to the purchase order. It have the same situation where you would do the month based on the one you want to look at the summaries for, done in a find. And in this case, the, the subtotal would be 486. If there were RMAs involved with this, uh, the RMA would be reducing this amount in this field. And in this case, there's $75 of unpaid that we did not pay a vendor. And just to show you how that works, it reduced it to 411 from the 486. Now, you can also use this up here to figure out what records uh, you want to view that are related to the difference. Like, for example, you see the unpaid balance in this case. So you would click on this record. If you're looking for an RMA subtotal that is uh, removed for not being paid, then that would be shown where you'd see an RMA that was issued and go to that record clicking on the I uh, information icon to go view that record to find the answers for that information. Now, if I go back to the ledger and then look or look at the expense ledger, let's go to the expenses. In the expenses, in this case, there's a number of records in here, not just sample data that we're working with. So you would see the summary for all the amounts due and then the amounts paid. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that there is a uh, amount paid or sum of the amount is what you're going to put into the, the uh, account ledger. This is the primary, and this is if you were not paid all the money, for example, here there's $30 still due, then this would indicate the actual amount of money that you took in for that period of time. That kind of information is put into the uh, the main ledger account. So we go back to the, uh, let's go to sales ledger. I'm going to jump over to the account ledger. You would fill in, first of all, the income numbers that you see in the summary total for the current month. And in this case, if we're doing May with a blank new record, I would put the summary for the total of income. I would then put the summary for uh, purchase items for the cost of all purchase items. Then I put in the summary for all expenses. And from the sales screen, I would put in the summary for all taxes. And what that would do is it adjusts this mount and the summary of all the summary numbers at the bottom based on what you actually uh, received and, and spent during the month. Then this number would automatically be calculated and changed for the month. And again, when you created the June account, you would take whatever the balance number is here, create the new record to do the June records, and then copy this number over unless, unless you have a ledger note where you either added money to the uh, statement balance during the month, or you took out money for whatever purposes from your capital uh, that you have in the bank, then you would make a note in the note ledger as to the amount that you took out. 
and the way you adjust that, that should turn into a, an expense item or a receivable in whatever way that you did it, in this case, some kind of income that would change this number. Now, how would I do that? I would click in this field. If I were going to say, for example, another $100 was put in there, I'd raise this to 6,356.57, and then it would automatically adjust this number by that amount. Let's just go ahead and do it just so we can see that happen. I would go up there and say 300, and now you see that it changed it to 356. So it's as simple as that. I'm trying to make this as easy as possible for you to understand how to keep track of all your ledger accounts and make sure that they give you the proper information. Just to make sure that we keep everything straight and narrow, I'm going to go ahead and put back in the two so that we know that that's what the actual amount is that we're working with. And it's that simple. And you see it change. And then you see all the summary numbers change as well. If you have any questions, as usual, you can contact me either by email or give me a call on Skype and I can help you with any help that you need. Thank you.